Hello there and welcome to another Partners in Crime tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you guys how to make an After Effects style glitch effect in Blender. Now, we already have a glitch tutorial out, but it's a little bit outdated, so we're going to be showing you guys how to make this new and improved glitch effect. So uh, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is delete the default cube by typing X on your keyboard and then clicking delete. Next, you want to type numpad1 on your keyboard to go into front view. Then you want to type control and then alt and then numpad 0 on your keyboard to bring the camera into front view. Now we're going to add some text. So go into the top left of the screen here, click the create tab, scroll down and click text. And now that we've added our text object to the screen, let's rotate it so that it's facing us by typing R and then X and then 90 and just type enter to confirm the rotation. Now let's go into the right of the screen, click the text object data tab, scroll down and under paragraph and align click center. So now we're just going to pull our text down a bit. So left click on this blue arrow, hold it and just pull that down. And that looks about good. So now that we have our text object set in the center of our screen, let's open a font that we have stored on our computer and then edit our text. So we're going to include the download link for the font we'll be using in the description. So click this folder here to get this font started. Okay. And for this tutorial, let's see, we'll use Jura. So let's find that font. Let's see where I put that font. So select that and click open font. Scroll up to zoom in. And let's press tab to edit our text. Go into text edit mode. Erase the text. Type your own custom text. So we're just going to type glitch. And press tab to exit text edit mode. Now we're going to make this text a little bit thicker. So we're going to change the offset up on that. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to add a material to this, but before we do that, we're going to change the render engine from Blender Render to Cycles Render at the top of the screen here. So select this and select Cycles Render. Now go into the right of the screen and go into the material section and add a new material. So click this here. And now that we've added a new material, let's change the material from a diffuse material to an emission material. Let's put the strength up to 3. So now we should have a bright white text in the center of our screen. So let's go to render view so we can see. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're going to go back into solid view and we're going to go into the right of the screen here and go into the bold settings. We're just going to make the background black. So click this here and drag this down to black. So now we should have a white text with a black background. So we're going to render this and then jump into the compositor to start making our glitch effect. So render, render image. Just wait for this to finish rendering. So this is looking pretty good. So let's jump into the compositor and check use nodes and check backdrop. And let's add a viewer node so we can get our text showing up in the background here. So click add output and then click viewer. 
and hook the image output of the render layers node to the image input of the viewer node. And now we're going to start adding what's going to help make us our glitch. So click add at the bottom left of the screen here, distort, and click displace. Hook it up here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a texture for our glitch to displace to. Now let's go back into default view, go back into 3D view, and go into the right of the screen here, scroll through this tab here, and go into the texture section, and add a new texture. And we're going to change the texture type from image or movie to clouds. I'm going to change the basis from Blender Original to Cell Noise. And we'll bring the depth down to zero on that. So uh, now we have our texture that is going to basically make our glitch. So we're going to animate this and then we're going to jump back into the compositor and displace our text to it. So let's jump back to the beginning frame here. Put the size down to 0.1. Hover your cursor over this box and type I, and then we're just going to jump to frame 7, because we want this effect to be a really fast glitch effect, so we're just going to jump frame 7 and make the value of point 0.27. Hover your cursor over that and type I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe. Now, this means, now that we've inserted the keyframes, that from frame zero to frame seven we've got our glitch going but if we fast forward to th for the frames our glitch isn't really moving over here anymore so what we're going to do is we're going to add an effect that's going to basically repeat our sizing of our texture so let's split the screen here go into the bottom left of the screen here and pull this out and we're going to go into the graph editor. We want our texture to show up in the graph editor. So to do that, I'm just going to add a modifier to the right of the screen here. So we'll go into the modifier section, add modifier, and we'll use warp. And just select the texture we created here. And now we get our texture to show up in the left of the screen here. Now that we've got our texture shown up here, let's click this arrow, make sure we've got the noise size here. And these are our keyframes, so this is frame 0, and this is frame 7. What we're going to do now is we're going to add that effect that's going to repeat this. So click channel, extrapolation mode, and just click make it cyclic. So now you can see we have this effect just repeating and repeating. So now that we've got our glitch animated, well, the procedural texture for our glitch animated, let's jump into the compositor and actually animate the actual glitch effect. So we'll go into the compositor, click add, input, texture, select the texture that we created, and hook the color up to the vector of the displace. And now put the X and Y scales for the displacement up to 100. So that's looking pretty good. And if you don't want this uh, alpha transparency in the background, you can uncheck Use Alpha. Okay, so now it's just glitching our image. Okay, so uh, let's move on the timeline a bit so you can see how this glitch really animates. So you can see we've got kind of a constantly moving glitch going on there. Let's adjust the scaling for our, our glitch texture. So click this here. I'm going to make the X scale 0.1 and the Y scale 7. Like so. So now we've got a little bit more of a distorted image. Let's fast forward along here. You can see glitch is looking pretty good. So, uh, Let's go down to zoom out and use a little mouse button to pan around. 
Now we're going to make it so that our glitch only shows up at certain frames in our animation. So to do that, we're going to add in an alpha over node. So click add color alpha over and hook it after this displace node. Now we're going to hook our original undistorted image to the bottom input of the alpha over node. So basically, with the factor at 1, it will completely mix our displaced text with our undisplaced text. Okay, so if we put the factor at 0, it won't mix those two. Now, I'm just going to put the factor back at 1. We're going to add in an invert node. So let's click add color invert. And let's set the color output to the factor input of the alpha over node. Now the reason we're adding an invert node is because of the easy just check the effect on and check the effect off kind of thing that we get when we hook it up to the factor. So if we uncheck this, our glitch effect is turned off. And check it, it's turned on. Okay, so let's jump to a certain frame in our animation. Let's start with frame 7 and uncheck this of your cursor over this and type I and jump to frame 8 and check that and type I. So now basically our glitch doesn't start until frame 8. The reason we inserted the keyframe at frame 7 is so that our glitch would not start until the 8th frame. So before frame 7, there's no glitch. Now let's jump to frame 12. We'll go with frame 11. Hover your cursor over this and type I. And then jump to frame 12. Hover your cursor over the value and type I. Well, which we'll see, got a little bit caught up there. You want to uncheck the RGB curves node at frame 12 and have your cursor over that and type I. Now, uh, the glitch will stop at frame 12. So from frame 7 to 12, we have our glitch going on. Okay, and it stops at approximately frame 12. So let's pull our nodes out a bit. So now we've pretty much made a cool glitch effect, but let's add in that those different colors that we get when we glitch. Make it more After Effects style. So let's add in a color mix. And let's hook it up after the displace node. And let's hook this here and change it from a mix node to an add node. Shift D this and hook it up here. And we're going to change this to color. We're going to make the color red. Now if we add distort translate, put it after this displace node and let's put this negative negative 3 okay and let's make sure we're on a frame where we can see our glitch so let's jump to frame 7 frame 8 is when our glitch actually starts so, and now you can see we've got that red coming out a little so the reason we added our translate node is so that let's put the value back to 0 as it was we don't just have our red text blending with our white text right with it we're going to push it out to the side a little so it looks more like a proper glitch. So negative three. Okay, so now we can do this again and add another color. So shift D, put this add to make sure you hook it up after the add node that's up to these. Put that there. And click that, hold shift and click this. Shift D to duplicate it. Scroll down to zoom out. Hook the image output of the displaced node to the image input of the translate node. 
and hook the color output to the input of this add node here. And let's put this to, let's put the Y down to negative three. So let's change the color to put the Y down to negative seven, so we can get a little bit more glitchy. And let's put that to blue. So now we get a blue glitch with our red glitch and of course our original color glitch. So as we fast forward through here, you can see a glitch starts at frame 8, ends at frame 12, and we're pretty much finished making our After Effects style glitch effect in Blender. So now that we've finished with this effect, we want to hook the image output of the alpha over node to the image input of the composite node so that whenever you render your animation, that all the effects that we composited will show up in your video. So you want to change the file format to XVID, change the encoding, 14,000 bitrate, 14,000 bitrate, and if you have the audio in your scene you put mp3 and you want to change the output folder to whatever folder on your computer you want the video to be in so you want to put it in your videos folder or something like that name your video and click accept and then you just click render animation and your animation will be rendered so now that we've finished creating our glitch effect, we're pretty much finished with this tutorial. And uh, if you found this tutorial helpful, you can leave a like or a comment below. And uh, also, you can subscribe for more tutorials from partners in coordinated rendering of ideas, motion, and effects.